Hi, we're here with Tom Wells, the inventor of the Away With Geese product, and we have a few questions to ask you. First of all, my first question is, um, I think we all are wondering this one, is what, um, how did you get the idea? What made you think of geese? That's a great question. Um, I had a friend who had a problem, and he called me, and uh, we just started discussing, and then went out and started doing uh, different works with it. Uh, through another job I had, I had, had a problem with lights one time at a trade show, and uh, I remembered that. Uh, we came out and started working with uh, blinking lights, different colored lights. Uh, then we had we had batteries that were huge issues because you had to change a battery every time out in your pond. So uh, we knew we had to go to solar powered, and so slowly uh, it took about six months to come up with uh, what we felt was our first working model. And, and that from there we uh, uh, did more marketing work on it. And then in about uh, exactly one year's time, we were set to go out to the marketplace. Okay. So it started off with somebody who had a problem and. Exactly. Yeah, very much so. And a lot of things like that, you look at, uh, you kind of work at it backwards. Mm -hmm. And you find that problem and say, how am I going to solve this problem? Mm -hmm. um, can you explain how this works, how your system works? Geese are very interesting because they have to, um, because of predators, they have to get back into the water at night. Mm -hmm. So they're out in the daytime, they're eating and pooping on your property all day long. Mm -hmm. And right at darkness, not at dusk, but right at darkness, they just they just zoom into the water. And they're in the water all evening, and then at about a uh, about an hour before sunrise, they're walking back out, starting that whole cycle over again. Mm -hmm. So what we found out is if we put our product in there, and we have them in there from 10 to 11 hours, that they have this blinking light, they just can't sleep with it. Uh, they, they look like uh, you're catching a bass, their head just snaps back and they, they try and get away from it and they float back, they hit it again and it just, this goes on and on all night long and normally after three to five days they just say let's go find a new spot that mm -hmm. because they like to again have that, that whole combination all in one spot so and they're very lazy birds, for them a perfect day they don't fly, they just mm -hmm. walk in and out of that pond. Mm -hmm. So what made you focus on light rather than sound or decoys or smells? Well, one of the things that, that's nice about the light is when it's out there, um, it, it looks like somebody's lighting a cigarette, mm -hmm. okay, to you and I. Uh, to them, it has a whole, they have very sensitive eyes, very, very good eyesight, and uh, it just, they can't sleep with it. Uh, if you get into to sound, I can't put that by your house and your, your bedroom. They say, wait a second, this, I can't sleep with it either. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, people have used firecrackers and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, uh, and as far as smell, I don't think they have too good on smell. But they're, the key thing with the geese is that their eyes are very, very sensitive. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what makes that light work. And that light is on every night. Uh, seven days a week, seven evenings a week, and um, and that's what another thing is, it's consistent, where sometimes a lot of things you have, or a lot of things that they try and uh, move geese with are just not consistent, so it just, it doesn't work, but we're there every night, all night long. So, is the light then bothersome to other things, maybe other animals, or maybe humans? Good question. Uh, no, we've, uh, the biggest question we'll have is, People say we have swans in our pond, mm -hmm. um, and we had to go out and test with that, but the swans sleep with their head tucked underneath their wing. Okay. doesn't bother them at all. Uh, the geese are really some of the only things that are, have to be in that water at night. Mm -hmm. uh, so, no, we don't, uh, we don't bother ducks, um, blue herons, um, uh, it, nothing else around that pond that we, we had any problems with. Um, so what does your invention look like? Well, it, it comes in a couple different forms. We have one that uh, floats out in the water uh, that is tethered to a cinder block and a quarter inch line and it'll let it move in about a ten foot circle out there. So as the, as the air is moving and the water is moving, it's, 
it even gives it another attraction to it that it's it's not just sitting in one place mm -hmm. as it's blinking it's kind of moving and again they that even scares them more that this thing's now coming towards them and that right. type of thing and then um, is it always uh, when you're in business uh, business moves you in a direction tells you that um, there's a need and so after we were open about two months uh, people started emailing we've got a hundred and fifty feet of uh, lakefront property and it's a great big huge lake and we're not allowed to put something in the water that's against uh, the boats or whatever we can't do that but I need something just for my piece of property so we came up with what we call our land unit that mm -hmm. is has the same top same light to it but it has a, a plastic base and then a piece that goes down the ground that this all hooks together on and so you're able to put it out and I tell people every time they mow their lawn to move it 10 feet mm -hmm. and again the geese see it and they just they don't like it and they just kind of puts an X on your property and they go find a new spot. Okay. So like the problem we have at school with the geese on our football field, we would obviously want something that's staked in the ground. You're right and that led us to uh, that uh, customer I probably turned away for about a year. Mm -hmm. I had all kinds of schools and uh, football fields, soccer fields, baseball fields that contacted me and I just said, you know, our land unit can be installed in 30 seconds, but it can be uninstalled in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was very concerned about that. I like to think of myself as a good businessman. I'm not going to sell you a product that you're going to put out on Friday and Sunday night, it's you say, where is it? I, mean, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I know I don't see it. Um, so we finally came up with what we call our sports unit, which has um, an auger, a steel auger that goes about a foot into the ground. We slip our plastic piece over that. There's an eye bolt on top of the auger. We then have a hole set up on our plastic that goes through, and that gets bolted to the eye bolt to the anchor. So now we're connected to the earth. Okay. Can't come out. We've got one a piece of plastic come up here. We put our light on top of that. We then anchor our light into the plastic. Now we're totally tied into the ground. Mm -hmm. Now to put this auger in, you need like a broom handle to really screw it in. And it's, once you get it in, that's um, actually what holds trailers down. So it's a very formal type thing. Okay. Can somebody still come up with a baseball bat and smash the light? Yes. So we feel that we're 90% good. Uh, maybe kid proof I guess I would call it. Uh, so that's been, uh, we've done a lot with uh, the baseball, the soccer and then the football fields and just as we were talking about the ponds it's very interesting how these birds learn about safety and if you tell me that you have a football field, a soccer field or a baseball field that has a fence around it, has a gate on that, that fence, somehow those birds understand that that is safe inside there. Again, what happens, those predators cannot get in there at night. So they've got a safe haven in there, so they can be there just like that pond, stay there all night. Uh, finally, when somebody gets there, boom, they take off and you know, find some other place for the daytime. But um, that's, that's an interesting phenomenon to me mm -hmm. that I, I had to learn about. So, I mean, you said your invention works on a beam of light. Um, we have the problem of the geese on our football field during the day. Um, would that beam of light keep them away during the day? Again, that, that, that's always a tough problem. What I would tell you is we're going to probably be uh, a 70, 30 percent of, of working because what's going to happen is those, those geese get back there early in the morning and they probably don't leave until uh, a little bit later in, in the evening and such. Both times they're going to be seeing that light. Um, both times they don't they don't like it. And what we're trying to do is kind of put an X on your field and let them say, "Hey, go find another place. This is this is changed. There's something about this that has just definitely changed, and it's not the same place that it was before." Mm -hmm. The little yeah <laughs> sanctuary. Um, what size area would one the work on? uh, the, the light takes here an area that is basically 75 yards in radius so you're looking at about three and a half acres it takes care of um, one if, takes care of one takes care of yeah so uh, if you take a, a football fields 
if you kind of double up a football field, that's the size of three and a half acres. So um, that's a, you know, it's, and what we have to do is look at the different uh, shaped ponds and that type of thing. It, again, it's a beam of light. It's like you're playing flashlight tag. You have to be able to see it. So uh, I think one of our famous ponds was up in, uh, early on was up in uh, Boston on a, a golf course that had a U-shaped pond. Mm -hmm. And they had very high uh, grasses and, and bushes in the center of this U pretty good size U and so they put the U and they put the device down at the bottom of one of the legs looking up that U. So I talked to the superintendent about three or four days later and I said, well, how are we doing? It's working. He goes, you know, I said, I think it is working. He said, but it's kind of funny when I come in, he said, they're all packed up in the top corner of the other U. And I said, you know, I think we need a second light. So it's, uh, it, it it is a beam of light, so they have mm -hmm. to see it. And so they can hide if they can get into a pocket. That's where you say, okay, hey, we need a second one over here. To, uh, because it may be that you just have a, a two-acre pond, but you have some nooks and crannies to mm -hmm. it. And we say, gee, we're going to need one over here and, and that type of thing. Um, get into a pond that has uh, an island. And an island to a goose is like a small piece of heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, again, go back to your predators can't get there. They're just out there. They're, they're fine. So people that have islands, they'll be calling me in the spring. You know, we have the, the geese are mating and they're, you know, there's nesting out on that island. And they know that that's a great spot for them because, again, no predators, nothing in that. So if we have an island, we'll put, you know, numerous ones on either side of it and that mm -hmm. type of thing. Now this beam of light, is it emitted 360 or... It, it is, and it, it's it's focused. It is emitted in 360 degrees. It has it's solar powered, so it'll run for eight days without seeing the sun. Um, and again, it's emitting, and it, it's really interesting when you take that the plastic apart. The job that they did to the prisms to make that go out in that 360, and then it's focused at that. 18, 19 inches off the water. Now, if we're above it, looking down, can we see it? Yes, but again, it's, it doesn't keep us awake. It doesn't, you're not noticing it, but it's really sending that, that light out at a right parallel to that water, right in their, kind of their sweet spot of their, their eyes. And the water would probably tend to reflect it yep. as well. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see, a two-year guarantee? You have a guarantee on your... We're, Parts? Julie, we're the only people in this industry that guarantee our product. So that, we're very proud of that. We're, we think we have a, a great, great product. We know we have a great, great product. Um, so we give you a, two years if any part fails or whatever, we replace it. Um, we now have a product that uh, is starting its 50 or ending up its 50 or out in the field. So. Um, even if you take the price and you divide it by two, that gives you a realistic price of what it is per year. As you get into three, four, and five years, that price just keeps on falling down and becomes more and more reasonable and, and a great bargain. Um, my students and their um, expert or their assignment, they had to find something that was safe uh, for the geese um, and for humans, of course, and everybody else involved. Um, something that was um, inexpensive and something that would work all the time. So it sounds like your product would be safe and <laughs> would work all the time, except for during the day. It, it would work during the day, but um, can you explain that a little bit? Because we were concerned about light during the day. We kind of... Right, right. But you said uh, about putting the X. Yeah, again, yours is a, is a hard project, to say the least on it. Um, one of the things that we're working on right now is working on a product that uh, would work during the daytime. Okay. Um, we don't have that uh, out quite yet, but we're working on it, and uh, that's in the experimental stage, and uh, we're having some good results back early on it. But okay. that would be something maybe that uh, in six months we'd be able to turn to you and say, hey, we really have something that works super during the daytime. So maybe you guys can give some of your ideas to me, and I'll pass them along to Mr. Wells, and maybe he can incorporate some of your Great. ideas you have with the decoys and coyote urine and things like that. 
Um, and then the third part was um, inexpensive, if you don't mind. The, uh, the land unit uh, sells for $349 a unit. Uh, the water unit's like $369 a unit. Uh, but it's, it's interesting, Julie, because by the time that people come to us, uh, they have tried everything. Mm -hmm. They've tried the coyotes, they've tried string, they've tried firecrackers, um, and they finally want to get rid of this problem. Uh, again, one of the things when you're talking about your sports field, each one of those uh, geese produce three to four pounds a day that they leave behind. That's a day. So on the way over, we were talking that there's 33 to 35 geese on that, that football field. Do you hear that, football players? So now we're going to take that times three. We're talking about 100 pounds a day that they're leaving behind in that field. Uh, it's a huge, huge problem. And if you have it, it's, uh, you just want to solve it. And mm -hmm. we're very lucky that we solved the problem. And, and uh, we're very excited about it. And we think hopefully we can help the kids out. Good. Um, let's see. Placement studies for units. One of the units. things that we came up with is uh, that is we've now done for about a year and a half is uh, by using Google Earth we can take your address and we can zoom right in on that address. We can measure your uh, let's use the the football field. We do a lot of work with large schools and they have two baseball diamonds. Uh, soccer field to football field so we need to measure those we need to be able to then say okay we need to have seven units and then we're able to um, with symbols and numbers be able to place those so now as a school administrator you can take that to the board and say here here's what the manufacturer says we need seven units to take care of our problem mm -hmm. so it's been a huge huge help to us uh, and then also looking let's say at a pond we can measure the whole body of water. We know exactly how far the, the light works. And now we see, well, wait a second, we have some nooks and crannies that mm -hmm. we talked about before. So instead of maybe two units, we need three units. And, and now we've got one blank spot up here. So now we know we have those covered. And we found that our success rate has gone up just tremendous with that because maybe it used to be before the guy said, gee, I just need one unit. And then he called me and said, Tom, it's not working. Mm -hmm. And so now we're able to go back and say, you don't need one unit, you need three units. And, and so it's, uh, it's important to have it covered properly and that type of thing. So that's what we do with mapping. And it has really, really worked out well for us. It comes out to someone in a one-page email, um, very easy to receive, and everybody can open it and all that kind of good stuff. Um. Question I had in my mind. Um, oh, do you have do you have any data on um, how well it works? I mean, have you done any data studies on? <laughs> well, we we have good data because we we again we guarantee the product. So if okay. it doesn't work for you, you send it back to me. Oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> so that's pretty good data. Uh, we get back uh, three point three percent of our product. Okay. So we think we we're very, very successful, and we're very happy with that kind of rate and such on it. And uh, yeah, that's that's how we know how, okay, how well right. it works, I guess. And then you mentioned earlier, and this is kind of going back. You mentioned earlier that you use uh, solar power for your um, to keep it running, and it's right. good for eight days. Um, what do you do then um, during winter months um, when the sun's? Julie and I had this discussion on the, on the way over, and we were talking about the first generation light that we had. And uh, this is our fifth year, and uh, it's a f we got into about our second year of our product, and in December 22nd, we were losing power. And, and so I started working with some new manufacturers and uh, some new engineers, and I asked them, I said, you know, I. It must be getting cold. It must be, you know, December 22nd, it's cold outside. It must be the temperature that's uh, evolving, so making this problem. And the uh, one engineer in Malaysia laughed and he said, very kindly, he said, uh, Mr. Wells, that's a great theory, he said, but it's just dead wrong. And so then I laughed and I said, well, what, uh, what's the, how, how do we solve this problem? He said, it has to do with the 
the winter solstice. The sun has gotten so low in the sky and your solar collector is so small at this angle coming in, there's just not a great enough, not enough juice to charge up your, your light. So it was sitting, waiting for that sun to get a little bit higher again so then it would charge up and start working again. So I said, okay, how do we go about solving this? And I said, I'll tell you what, I, let's pick four country, cities in the United States and I want that to work on December 22nd. So they, and then we also, the second thing we wanted, we wanted that 360 emission that's going all the way. So they came back and, and we reworked the whole light and came up with uh, about a four inch solar collector on top. Um, and that has just worked out perfect. And, but that's how we came up with the whole design of the light. It's kind of doing it backwards, saying, okay, we have to have work on the 22nd. We want to have 360 degree coverage. And, and with that, they came up with a, the new light design for us. Okay. Um, do you now have your, as you mentioned, your product is now in the fifth year right. of right. production? Um, a patent. Once you came up with your idea, can you tell us how you took off with that? Well, that's part of that cost. <laughs> there, uh, yeah, patent attorneys uh, are things that are very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it is what um, our patent is kind of an unusual patent because uh, if you told me that you have a float that has a light flashing on top of it, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? You tell me a buoy. Mm -hmm. Well, a buoy's been out in the river since you know, 150 years. But, so we had to go in what they call a methodology patent. And this is that, okay, we have a light that floats, and what does it do? It takes care of geese, it removes geese. And so we had to do a lot of work on that. And there were some people that had some different ideas, but we, our approach came through and was able to be patentable. First, mm -hmm. first you have to find out, can it be patentable? That's, mm -hmm. that's one of the things they look at it, is somebody already submitted that. Uh, there are patents for anti-gravity paint that you're gonna paint on your ceiling. Just in case somebody comes up sometime and invents that, then you're gonna oh, really? have to kind of go back through that person and uh, give them some kind of commission on it, that type of thing. So, yeah, patents things are, are very expensive, they're very involved. Um, it's a pretty interesting topic, and uh, patents, you can, you can kind of put your finger on it and say, yep, that's what we're trying to do, it's just this very specific type mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Well, I hope I answered all the questions that my students might have had for you. I tried to think of them all. Um, thank you for talking Great. with us. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you.